Good morning, dear ones. Um, I was talking with Sherry Leach in the comments to my last video, and I told her that I would show some equipment that you need to spin cotton. Um, let me begin by saying there are spinners who can spin cotton on the type wheel that I showed you. I'm not one of them. I'm more of a wool and alpaca spinner. Um, I can spin cotton, but not well. I just haven't done much of it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to post in the description some links to people who really are good at it so you can see how it's supposed to be done. Um, spinning cotton is, uh, requires different equipment because the length of the fibers are much shorter than, um, wool or alpaca. Um, different sheep have different lengths of hair. It's called the staple length. Um, Merino, uh, Shetland, uh, Coriadale, Alpaca, all, those all have a long enough length of staple that it, they're easy to spin and they're easy to learn on. Um, that's why most spinning instructors will start you with Merino. Um, it's the most forgiving, pretty much, of the bunch. Uh, and it's relatively cheap as far as wool goes, so there. Um, but it requires a different process for cotton. So let me turn my camera around, um, and I'll show you what I've got in front of me here. Okay, this is unspun cotton. Now this has been ginned where the seeds have been removed out of it, but you can see there's still a little flex of what in the spinning world is called vegetable matter, and in cotton it really is vegetable matter. When they start talking about wool, it's a polite way of saying animal poop and dirt. But yeah, so this is just unspun cotton. This is called cotton sliver. Some people call it sliver. It's spelled the same way. Um, it's prepared much like wool is okay it's just a long string of prepared cotton you pull off a hank of it and start spinning with it now these are called cotton poonies they are this stuff combed on special wire combs to sort of get all of the the fibers lined up and all going in the same direction and then you roll it onto a stick and you end up with a cotton pony and you just spin off the end of that pony. These are really nice to work with because it's already ready for you to go. <clears throat> that is a spinning bowl. When you're spinning um, with a supported spindle, which is what a lot of cotton is spun on, it's best, I don't know if you can see the inside of this bowl, see how it's got this flat place in the bottom of it? That makes the spindle spin much easier. I'm going to, I'm going to use a French spindle and see if I can get back far enough. My arms aren't long. Okay, you see what I'm doing? I'm flicking it and it starts to spin. Okay. Russian spindles are good for this too. They have a bigger bulby part down there. This is a DIY Tuckley spindle is what it's called. This one is basically made of two washers with real tiny holes in them. Uh, O-rings to hold them on. And what is essentially a barbecue skewer or a shish kebab skewer. A lot of people make these using silver coins or like a Susan B. Anthony and really strong uh, tempered metal wire about that diameter. Okay, and they put a hook on the end of it, sharpen the point of it, and it spins basically 
whoops, hello, just like the French spindle did. Okay. Now this was balanced. It would spin much longer and much more evenly, but you get the picture. This little jewel right here. I had to go ahead and open it up because it takes two hands to do that. <coughs> and I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time. This is called a book Sharka spinning wheel. Um, it is a portable version of the spinning wheel, the type spinning wheel, that Gandhi used when he was trying to encourage the people of India to spin their own cotton, make their own fabrics and materials, basically to remove any financial incentive for the British to be in India. Uh, and it worked, so go Gandhi. This one is a portable version. Now, when you open it, you can see it looks like a book, right? It's got the curved back side over here. When you open it, you're supposed to have it like this with the curved part facing you. There's a latch up here. You unlatch it, and you fold it out. Now, let me flip my camera. It is... In, it's not set up to spin. You have to put pieces together and get a... a drive band here and one over here and here's the little spindle that works just like those others I showed you that go with the with this wheel um, this is obviously much faster than the other two ways um, the materials are more expensive too so it's a trade-off I guess but yeah you can do some pretty serious production spinning on this thing once you get the hang of it let me flip my camera back up here. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to link to videos of people who are really good at spinning cotton. Because um, that's just not my forte. That's not my, my, my thing. Um, I need to get better at it if I want to spin linen because they're very similar. Um, and like I said yesterday, spinning linen is my goal. Um... The possibly this afternoon I will do another video um, of spinning wool when you've got nothing but the wool. And I will take it from, I don't have any raw wool, but I do have some alpaca that has been washed and its vegetable matter has been removed um, but it hasn't been carded or anything like that and I'm going to go from that to teaching you to spin wool without a spinning wheel or spindles or anything else. I'm also going to show you how easy it is to make your own drop spindle. So um, with that being said you guys be safe, be positive, um, learn something new, uh, do something kind for yourself, um, be at peace. The world's crazy enough. We don't need to add to it. Uh, you know, speaking of Gandhi, he said, and I'm going to butcher the quote, but you'll get the idea of it. Um, when you stop spinning, to make yarn and you spin for the zen of it that's not how he worded it but that's then you accomplish something and spinning really really is meditative and soothing and productive all at the same time um, with a drop spindle, there's some there's a frustration level at the beginning, but it's relatively quickly overcome. And with practice, you get better, and you learn the muscle memory fairly quickly. So, be encouraged. Do something that is soothing to your soul, and be here next time.